Welcome to the video. I am endocrinologist Dr. Akshay Jain in British Columbia, Canada. And in today's video, we'll chat about how to reduce the common side effects of medications such as Invokana, Ferziga, and Jardians. Before we proceed, a friendly reminder to please subscribe to my channel for more such videos and to like and share today's video if you find it helpful. Now, before we talk about how to reduce the side effects, let's take a step back and talk about how these medications actually work. Each of these medications, such as Invocana or Canagliflozin, Ferziga or Dapagliflozin, and Jardians or Empagliflozin, are from the same family of medications called SGLT2 inhibitor drugs. This is a very unique class of medications that was originally developed for the management of type 2 diabetes, but is now also being used to reduce the risk of heart failure, kidney disease, and other such benefits, even in individuals that do not have diabetes. So how do these medications actually work in diabetes? All of us have a kidney threshold for blood sugars. Our kidneys have an inbuilt defense mechanism to release excessive sugars if the levels of sugar rise up in the blood. Let me give you an example of a dam. As you know, dams are built across rivers to harness the power of water and to contain the water in the reservoir. If the level of the water in the reservoir rises significantly, the excess water will start spilling over from the dam. In the same way, our kidneys act as a dam. And if the level of the blood sugar, i.e. the reservoir rises too much, the kidneys will start spilling that excess sugar into the urine to reduce the burden of the high sugar in the blood. The STLT2 inhibitor medications actually lower the height of the dam so that more of the water starts spilling over. In other words, if your blood sugar is more than 72 if you're living in the US and some parts of Asia, or more than 4.0 if you're living in Canada and some parts of Europe, the excess sugar will now be dumped into the urine while on this medication so that our body can dispose of that high sugar without having to depend too much on the pancreas. SGLT2 inhibitor medications are now being prescribed extremely commonly by doctors and although these medications are very safe for the most part, some people may experience side effects. And I'll share my top tips with you on how to overcome these side effects. Side effect number one, genital yeast infections. Many individuals on these medications may notice a whitish discharge on the genitals or increased itchiness occurring due to a yeast infection down there. These infections can occur in up to 8 to 10% of women and 2 to 4% of men on these medications. If you are experiencing these side effects, I will share with you my mantra of the two H's that you can need to abide by. H, first H being for hydration. As discussed, these medications will dump that extra sugar into urine. And just like sugar is food for us, it is also fodder for yeast and bacteria. Hence, it is extremely important to drink plenty of water on these medications so that the urine is considerably diluted and is not too concentrated with sugar. Drinking a lot of water will significantly reduce the likelihood of developing yeast and other infections in the urine. When I say adequate hydration, I mean consumption of at least 1.5 to 2 liters of water a day, unless recommended otherwise by a doctor. The second edge is for hygiene. It is extremely important to maintain appropriate gentle hygiene while on these medications. These involves uh, ensuring that the gentle area is kept dry and also clean after each time that you urinate. Not doing so may lead to conditions that enable the yeast to thrive in those areas. If despite the two H's, if you still develop yeast infections on these medications, the good news is that for about 80% of people, these will be only occurring one time and do not tend to recur. Using local antifungal ointments or applications, and in some instances, taking an oral antifungal tablet 
can help to eliminate the infection. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist for more details about these. Side effect number two, frequent urination. When originally starting these medications, some individuals may notice an increase in the frequency of urination. This is nothing to worry about, and in most cases, it resolves after a few days or weeks. If you do experience increased urination, I would suggest taking these tablets early in the morning when you wake up and not close to bedtime so that you don't have to get up in the middle of the night and go pee while on these medications. Side effect number three, reduced blood pressure or dizziness. It is important to note that when glucose is being dumped into the urine by these medications, the sugar or glucose will drag water from the body along with it and in, into the urine. Hence, it is extremely important to drink adequate amount of water while on these medications. Otherwise, symptoms of dehydration, such as dizziness occurring when you change your position or a low blood pressure might occur. If you're already taking blood pressure medications or water pills, please discuss with your doctor to see if these need to be adjusted before starting the SGLT2 inhibitor medication. There can be some other not so common side effects with this class of medication that your doctor or pharmacist will discuss with you. Do take a minute to check out some of my other videos that discuss how to reduce side effects on some other medications used for diabetes. And don't forget to like and share this video. I sincerely hope that you found this video helpful.